A guy that wasn't a kicker, but a receiver on the uh, 1984 National Championship team as we continue our celebration. 30 years later on BYU Sports Nation, Glenn Kozlowski. Glenn, great to have you on the program. How are things in Illinois today? You know, it's kind of warm and kind of sunny, so that's a first for us in a while. Fantastic. We've been uh, talking to various guys every Wednesday, uh, talking about the 84 team, Marv Allen, uh, one of those guys, uh, telling us always great stories. And, and a guy who ended up moving to Illinois uh, to help coach some high school football. What's that relationship been like with a former teammate from that 84 team? You know, it's been great. Dave and I were roommates on the road. Sorry, and, David and, Mills, uh, yeah. David Mills. Yeah, so yeah, Dave Mills and I were roommates on the road. And so we made a, a, a deal. Our, uh, it was his senior year, my junior year in 1984, that if either one of us ever got a head coaching job in high school, the other would come out and coach with him. So I got the job first, so he came out. And then, you know, we, the deal was is that once we turned the program around, he would take it over and I would – uh, uh, leave and take a new job and of course being who I am I immediately took a job in the conference so we could compete against each other <laughs> nice. it more interesting and fun <laughs> he mentioned that you've met five times and that uh, he's had the best of you you know three two but you've won the last two so I'm wondering in your opinion yeah, who well, owns the I series mean, yeah, well, I mean, basically, the uh, his first three victories were with my the kids that I had had taught the game of football with. So you coached them. You coached them up. You got you got to get credit yeah, for that. Were, you know, the the juniors and seniors, especially the first two years, were my kids. So you know, the, since it has become his program, he's zero and two. So you do the math. <laughs> you yep, you do the math. Absolutely, a lot of fun stories come out of 1984. That's been maybe the most. Uh, uh, the best part about talking to uh, many of your teammates from that year. One of those uh, stories that came out a, a, a couple weeks ago was one particular practice, for some reason, Robbie Bosco decided he wasn't going to throw you a pass. You were going to have zero catches in a particular practice. I'm wondering what the motivation for that was and what your reaction was to that. Well, I mean, who knows what rolls around in Robbie's little brain. But, uh... <laughs> You know, uh, probably we were roommates his freshman year. Well, actually, we were roommates for three days, and he ran out immediately because he thought I was a trained killer or something or a thug or something <laughs> like that. I just scared him. And so that was probably it. No, we, we would always have fun with each other, and I made the, the – um, cocky, ignorant decision to think that I could actually torment the quarterback who controlled the football on every play. And so it didn't work out very well for me because, quite frankly, he just didn't throw the ball to me the entire day. So, uh, yeah, it was a tough day. My nostrils were flaring. And, yeah, I, I would I, – every receiver thought they were open always, but I – always thought I was open and so uh you know it was bothersome to say the least but uh, I learned from that point on to suck up to Rob because quite frankly I didn't <laughs> want another day like that right. so yeah no it was you know it was we always had a lot of fun and it was just one of those things I I thought that I tried to get everybody else to not talk to him and of course Robbie turned it on me by uh not throwing the ball to me. So I figured out quickly that he had the ultimate control. And just for the record, kickers are not people and kickers are not football players. <laughs> oh, They're man. kickers. Don't tell, don't I tell mean, them you know, that. Look, you're sweating, you're bleeding, you're bloody for 59 minutes. And I'm talking about at the pro game uh, in college. I think it's 12. And, and then this guy goes running out there with a clean uniform. And if he misses, you want to kill him. If he makes it, you ignore him. That's right. <laughs> and, that and, is right. And sometimes Basically. he doesn't have a shoe like your uh, buddy Lee Johnson. Well, Lee was Lee was really, I mean, he was a great athlete and just a complete goof. So he was okay. Like, you know, if you're that goofy, then you're cool. But you know, a lot of them are person. like corky weird. <laughs> you know, he was he was just weird. You know, yeah, so. most most kickers are weird, though. Well, well I yeah, of course yeah. they are. I think, but I think, I think, I think, Glenn. You know, as as players, I think we do it to them because we sh we shut them off socially that they become weird because they have nobody to talk to. They have no friends. <laughs> That might, you know, that's probably a good observation. I never I thought of it that way. But Lee was so, you know, he was just so bizarre that you, you, <laughs> you just had to embrace him because he would just, he would, he would just baffle me every day with stupid talk, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, I like you because I don't understand what you're saying to me. Yesterday, so at, yeah, Lee was entertainment. Glenn, yesterday entertainment at practice, we're on the balcony uh, watching practice. Some of the media. 
and the, uh, the speakers are roaring with some country song that I was unfamiliar with. And all of a sudden, I hear this voice above me just singing at the top of his lungs. <laughs> at, uh, and I turn, and it's Lee Johnson just <laughs> roaring from the balcony. Yeah, Ben. It's still going. Yeah, look, the guy played for forever in the, the National Football League. So, I mean, just a, he, he really was you know, kind of like Ray Guy, where he was just a tremendous athlete. I can remember one. I mean, I've seen him punt the ball 120 yards, literally 120 yards. I mean, that was in practice, but the guy would just mash it. And so, you know, guys like that, you you, you, you accept them because they're, they're difference makers, you know, and you love the difference makers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They could, they could uh, make it or break it for you. Uh, Glenn, I was looking at some, some highlights here um, on the screen. Just looking at all, your, all of your catches, what uh, is, 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 I would say, the, the, the biggest catch uh, that you remember in your career? That would be my wife. My uh, nice. sophomore year. Point um, you know, I still, I still try to figure out exactly how I tricked her into marrying me. But yeah, that would be my greatest catch, and my biggest catch was my wife. No that's like that's like it. twenty points right now. She's wow. listening. She's listening, isn't, isn't she? That's a veteran move. Glenn, man. Is, is, no, she doesn't. Is she, she's is she so listening right now? Me now and ignoring me that she no, she's 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 not around. So, but no, that that is you know the truth is that. Uh, I enjoyed winning a heck of a lot more than I ever did care about catches or numbers or stats. And, you know, what that was what was kind of cool about our team in general. You know, guys wanted the ball because we wanted to win, not because we wanted to pad our stats. So, you know, when people ask me my best catch, I don't know. I don't really care. I, I'm more proud of the fact that, you know, I was on the team when we won 28 games in a row. Yeah. Um, you know, over that course of time. So that mattered a heck of a lot more to me than any of the other things. Legendary wide receiver Glenn Kozlowski on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, Glenn, 30 years since the national championship. What's been kind of the, the major fallout uh, and effect on your life from winning that? You know, really not a lot. I kind of, you know, I've never put on a, a ring. I've, I've, you know, it was never? kind of funny because I, no, nah, you know, it's like what you did yesterday doesn't matter and pretty much nobody cares. So, um, no, I just never have. I never really thought about it. It probably means more now, you know, looking back as I start to become a, a, grand, a grandpa six times over and, you know, have all these granddaughters now. But uh, it means more now probably from just going, wow, that was pretty cool that we did that. But at the time, we just kind of expected to do it. And it wasn't uh, – something that I ever thought about it really you know the rings and everything else I think I you know because I have I, I, I started all four years and, and other than the one year where they threw me out of school and 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 rightfully so I might add but you know I, I had all the rings on one day and, and then I had the bears when they when you retire and, and you give your body parts they give you alumni rings so I had the five rings on my finger and I was looking I'm like man it's pretty cool so, but, you know, it was the first time I ever put it on my fingers, you know, any of the rings. So You have the unique distinction, I believe, of having played college football with Jim McMahon and in the NFL with Jim McMahon, with the Chicago Bears. Which quarterback was better? Uh, the uh, college quarterback, Jim McMahon, was by far the better. By the time I got to the Bears, he was a little goofy. You know, he was goofy in college. But he, he hung out with really Lee Johnson goofy. too much? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, he was goofier than Lee. I mean, Lee, at <laughs> least every once in a while, he made some sense. Now, Jim was, you know, Jim was Jim. He was a unique character. I, you know, I actually got to play with him, Steve Young, and Robbie Bosco. So I had quite a quarterback trio um in college and i would say that uh, jim was by far the best of the three um even though steve ultimately you know he's a hall of famer in the nfl um but, you know jim was the best quarterback that i'd probably ever played with in in college or pros jim yes. uh he tweeted uh, yesterday or two days ago that he's finishing up his credits at byu byu fans very excited about that because if he actually graduates then he can be in the byu hall of fame is that something that, uh, you know, will be of significance, you think, to uh, those guys that played with him to actually get him in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I, I mean, I think the Hall of Fame maybe is a little bit more for the individual player, I suppose. But, uh, you know, I think it has more to do with maybe in Jim's case of just finishing something that he started and, and uh, you know, with his own children to say, hey, look, I, I went back and did it and, I think that's probably part of what drives him. I don't think Jim cares 
necessarily if he's in the Hall of Fame at BYU as much as he wants to finish what he started. And you know, look, he was he was a spectacular quarterback in college. And you know, the reason I went to BYU, I wanted to play with him for a year, and you know, I was lucky enough to start and play. So it was, uh, you know, it was quite a trip for me too to have that experience. Maybe he can use some of the uh, the football tutors. <laughs> that in, in yeah, yeah, you know he always did anyway, so why not? Yeah, hey, right. legal, I mean, legal and available. Might as well. Glenn yeah, no, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if he can anymore, but uh, maybe his uh, whoever is taking the test for him, because you know it clearly won't be him. <laughs> <laughs> taking the test for him. Well then, okay. But did, 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 yeah. did, you, did, you, did you guys have the test center, testing center back then too? Oh, we did, and I would, uh, you know, every once in a while I'd get called up because my hair was too long or I had three whiskers on my chin. Oh, that happened many. to me all the time. So, all, yeah, all the you know, time, and, yeah. It would, and then I would give myself a haircut, which, you know, I, I was always an ugly guy, but, boy, when I gave myself a haircut, I took ugly to a new level. So, <laughs> oh, you know. that's, that yeah, explains why you, why, why you uh, uh, are, uh, you know, a little bit confused why you got your wife, why you cut her. There you go. Yeah, yeah, well, that is, yeah, that's clearly confusing <laughs> for me. I'm still trying to figure it out, but I just say, hey, I, that's, you know, I got lucky, so you move on. So. Glenn Kozlowski is on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, what are you up to now, Glenn? About 240. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, and my playing weight was 220 in college and in the pro, so I'm at my pro playing weight at 240. So, yeah, what's that's your 40 what I'm time? up to now. Yeah, what's your 40 time? Uh, you know, it's probably like a 9-4 <laughs> now, a 10-5, because I'm not even going to try and run. I'll is that just back, walk Is it. that backpedaling? Is that, is that what that no, is? No, that's just power walking <laughs> with the nose high in the air and swinging the arms hard. <laughs> well, Glenn, we appreciate the time. It's always fun to talk to uh, different guys from the 84 team. A lot of the stories revolve around you, so finally fun to actually talk to you. Yeah, you know, I got to tell you, just so the, to clear the record up, <laughs> Dave Mills got his name Sluggo yeah. because we were playing cards in his apartment uh, one late, late night, and uh, I walked into his kitchen, and in his sink there was this slug sitting in a sink. And I'm like, how do you get a slug in your sink? And so I picked it up, and it became my pet Sluggo, and I named him Dave. And so thus the name <laughs> Sluggo. It had nothing to do with his speed, although he was kind of slow, but it really it was everything about the fact that he actually had a slug in his sink, which I'll never quite understand how you could get a slug. I can't even figure out how the slug got in there. He was on the third floor yeah, wait a minute. at Wymount Terrace, and those are brick apartments. I mean, this was a dedicated slug to get all the way up there. That was there. an angel so, in disguise. Well, that certainly changes yeah, the been, previous so. stories. So, uh, we'll <laughs> yeah, have to, what was that? What that, was that? That certainly changes the stories we heard in reference to that nickname. It was just speed, but now that we know the real story. Yeah, real it, was really, it was all about that. In fact, Lewis Wong was there. There were, uh, I think, Lewis and uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember who, uh, Kurt Cavea. So we were we were playing cards like we did quite a bit late at night while our wives were working the, the, the graveyard shift. And then, uh, you know, because we couldn't work. I mean, that's the rule, right? It's college yep. football. You can't work. So you yep. have to send your wife out to work. But, that's right. Yeah, that's how he got his <laughs> nickname, the slug. So it was sluggo. It wasn't because of his speed or any of the other crazy uh, stories. It was because he had a slug that was in his sink. And quite honestly, I kept it alive the entire 1984 season, that slug. The key to the championship, that's how the slug. The angel in disguise. I, I got to right know the key. The key was is that I would break the uh, one of the beds on the road on every road game, <laughs> jumping back and forth until the bed broke, and then we'd run out of the room. And that's what we thought was the key to the uh, success of the 84 season. And then Mills would also order uh, room service on uh, – on uh, what's our guy, our uh, our center? Um, I'm losing. I'm, I'm, I'm avoiding his name because of all the concussions now. Somebody help me out here. <laughs> Maddich wasn't the center, was it? Yeah, it's, uh, Trevor, there Trevor you Maddich. You so we, you know, Dave, we would call the uh, room service to his room, and then Dave would stand in front of his door and sign for it and take it down to our room. So. You know, Trevor would be arguing before we'd leave every Saturday morning about, <laughs> I didn't order room service, and David, I would kind of laugh and get on the bus, and, you know, so I don't know who paid for it, but uh, we sure enjoyed the food. <laughs> well, we may need a follow-up, because uh, you just opened up a bag of worms to uh, wonderful other stories, but, Glenn, we appreciate the time. Best of luck with everything that's going on in uh, Illinois with you. 
You got it. I, yeah, I don't know what I, I got going on, but I am 240, so you guys know that. So there Good you go. Good to guys. know. Have a great day. <laughs> Thanks, Glenn. Good to know. Hey, Glenn. All right. See ya. <laughs>